Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Death Mode playthrough episode. We are doing a rogue only playthrough and last episode we defeated the Desert Scourge, the Goblin Invasion, and the Giant Clam from the Sunken Sea Biome. And this episode we've got lots of things to do. We've got several things we can craft right away as well as some bosses that I want to fight soon. And if you notice I've also made some changes to the base. You can see a lot of this furniture used to have a lot more orange to it and I've painted it red which makes it a lot more of a uniform color. And I think it looks pretty cool. And you can also see I changed the dirt out for this stone with red moss. It looks pretty cool, but I'm not 100% sure if it's what I wanna stick with. I'm slightly tempted to make it an ash block instead and maybe even have some fire moss. I don't know, we'll have to see. I may mess around with it a little bit more. I think it looks pretty cool. It's like the base has like corrupted this area. But I don't want to use corruption blocks or anything, because if I use straight up corruption, then it could actually cause my NPCs to not have valid housing. And I don't want corruption that close to my base, of course. I've added the underworld music box right there, and I've painted it black. Some people had actually commented that I should put a music box because it would just make more sense to have a darker song as the theme for this base. And so the underworld seems to be quite fitting since a lot of this is um, inspired by the underworld. And you can see I've got another music box right here. And that way we've got the sound going throughout the base. And another thing people had mentioned is that you can actually stack the sand dollar. So we can stack two right there. And now it will attack twice as fast. There were some other things I was doing in between episodes. One was farming up leather and obsidian so that we can craft a raider's talisman. There's so many slimes right now. Oh my goodness. Um, so let's go ahead and craft that right now. There it is, the Raider's Talisman. The Raider's Talisman is actually a really powerful accessory. Whenever you crit an enemy with a rogue weapon, your rogue damage increases, and this can stack up to 150 times. Max rogue damage boost is 15%. The other thing I wanted to craft is the Coin of Deceit, and here it is. All it requires are four gold bars and eight copper bars. And this is just a simple accessory that increases the rogue critical strike chance by 6%. And both the sand cloak and the arrow stone are drops from the desert scourge, which I farmed up quite a few times in between episodes. It's actually quite easy to farm them up now that we've got such good weapons like the sea foam bomb and some of these other ones. Basically, you can buy the summons from the NPC, the sea king, and then you just go and fight the desert scourge, kill him real quickly, and you earn more money just from the desert scourge than the summon costs. So you can basically infinitely fight the Desert Scourge. These aren't really super rare drops, so it only took a few attempts, but we got the Arrow Stone now and the Spiked Sand Cloak. The Sand Cloak is actually a really cool rogue accessory that creates a dust storm around you. So we definitely are gonna have to try that out. And the Arrow Stone increases jump speed and all damage and increases movement speed. So we're definitely gonna have to put that on as well. I think it might be better than our Shield of the Ocean or maybe our Band of Regeneration. Yeah, I think that's what we'll use. So I just put on the spike sand cloak and let's go ahead and try this out. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> it's interesting that it doesn't follow me. I thought it was gonna follow me around, but it just places down this cool dust storm. I really like that. It's kind of crazy how many good accessories we already have. Another thing someone had mentioned is to use a die on our angry dog mount. And I think that is such a good suggestion. It looks so cool. It's like a hellhound now. And the last thing several people had suggested is crafting a storage component and upgrading it into a crafting interface. And all that requires is a storage component, three diamonds and seven sapphires. So if we do that, then we can place this right here. And I think this allows us to craft. Yeah, so we can place crafting stations in here and then it'll show us what recipes we have access to. It says we have an evil presence watching us. It just turned tonight, and I think that means the Eye of Cthulhu is going to spawn in just a little bit. So I'm going to do a couple last preparations and then head on over to our arena. So the Eye of Cthulhu just awoke, and we've got our buffs on, and now we got to be careful. Oh my gosh, we're taking so much damage so quickly. I'm used to easy Eye of Cthulhu for master mode, I think. This one's actually pretty crazy from the get-go. Death Mode Eye of Cthulhu is no joke. But this bomb is doing pretty good. And 
and yeah, we just gotta keep dodging them. And I'm just throwing these straight backwards, and it's doing pretty good here. The little orbs were spawning also do some damage if he runs back through them. So we'll just keep this pattern going for a little bit. There we go. A little bit of adrenaline. Oops. Got too excited about using adrenaline. Now I'm taking damage. No! Uh-oh. That was really bad. I wonder if our snap clam will be better. Okay, snap clam doesn't seem to be doing any better. So let's switch back to the bomb. Almost done. Okay, there we go. Honestly, that was a surprisingly hard fight. For death mode, there's so many mechanic changes. The Eye of Cthulhu just spawns totally enraged and can do so much damage to you really quickly. We got the Counter Scarf. We got the Menacing Shield of Cthulhu, and we have the Eye of Cthulhu lore, which in our inventory gives us night vision at night, but reduces our vision during the day. We also have the Alchemist Charm, and that's tier one, which gives us a discount with the Young Brewer and the Alchemist. So that's actually really good because we're gonna need to be buying some potions soon, and we should have the Alchemist move in now. I really like the Counter Scarf. It's basically like the Shield of Cthulhu, but instead of bouncing on the enemies, you can dodge right through them and you'll pass right through them and you won't take damage, but that only can be used every 15 seconds. And it's a Revengeance mode drop, but definitely something that is very useful. I generally use the Counter Scarf well into hard mode. And from the Eye of Cthulhu, we got Demonite. So let's check that out and see what we can craft. I don't know if there's gonna be anything we can really do with it right now, but really the Nightmare Pickaxe is the main thing we need it for. Yeah, so for now we can just put away our Demonite. Now that we defeated the Eye of Cthulhu, I'm kind of tempted to try King Slime and see how we can do on King Slime. It shouldn't be that bad of a battle. We just need to be really careful, keep moving. It has this little royal gem or grand crystal or whatever it's called. <laughs> I can't think of the name right now, but it's the little orb above us shooting the red projectile. And we just need to be careful of that. As long as we keep moving, we're pretty good. This arena helps out so much because really the main thing is not having the King Slime fall on top of you and trying to jump over it is kind of the tricky part. Although we're having trouble getting our hits landed because this Seafoam Bomb that we're using doesn't have the most range. So we may want to switch to maybe the Crystalline. Oh, and we have a dash now. That makes a huge difference. Yeah, now we can dash. We've got so much mobility. Yeah, this is so much easier. Yeah, we can even dash over him. And then I use the grappling hook a lot early game. And mainly I use it for knockback resistance because if you can get quickly stunned with all these small slimes, but if you just use your hook, you'll fly right through it and you'll only get hit, you know, the one or two times like this right here. Like I'm controlling my movement even though I'm getting hit because I'm using the grappling hook. And there we go, we defeated the King Slime. We're a bit overpowered for that fight to be honest, but it's still pretty fun. And I don't think we really needed too much from him, but I'm interested to see because I know some of his stuff is throwing, so let's see if any of it's useful. Well, we've got the ninja outfit, we got the slime gun, we got the solidifier, the royal gel's pretty good. And we got the crown jewel, which is what that red orb was that was flying above the king slime. So the crown jewel says that it boosts life regen even while under the effects of a damaging debuff. While under the effects of a damaging debuff, you will gain 10 defense and it's a revenge mode drop. And the king slime lore says if it's in your inventory, you'll get a slight movement speed and jump boost. However, your defense is slightly reduced due to your gelatinous body. 
And right now we've got 17 defense. If we drop it, we have 20. So I don't know if I want to lose three defense. So I'm definitely going to put that lore away. Most lore in the game doesn't seem to be that helpful. So I usually just put it away. And we have the traveling merchant in our base. And it looks like he's selling the life form analyzer, which will be a really good thing to have if we're trying to find the goblin tinkerer. The next thing I want to do is craft the summon for Krabulon. And what that requires is a demon altar and 25 glowing mushrooms. So we've got a demon altar right here. So let's go ahead and craft the sprout and we can craft two of them. We also had this NPC spawn and she sells all sorts of vanilla and modded potions. So right now you can already see we've got some different potions we can buy for calamity and other mods. And then we can buy some potions from just normal vanilla terraria. Swiftness potions, iron skin, regeneration, all sorts of good stuff. And we actually have a ton of gold, two platinum and 30 gold right now. And most of that was from farming the desert scourge. And then I also want to try to get some iron skin and maybe some swiftness and some regeneration. We've basically used up all of our savings, but it'll be very worthwhile to have these buffs. One thing I noticed that was confusing me a bit was after I purchased all those potions from the NPC, I wasn't actually getting the buffs. They should be active right here. I could craft the unlimited versions and then start combining them with Louis AFK like you normally do, but I wanna to try to avoid that. And instead I want to try to have them active up here so we don't exceed the total buff count. And so what I realized is I need to craft one into an unlimited potion. And then from there, all the others should work. So all I need to do now is basically just craft an unlimited shine potion. And if I do that and put it over here, suddenly all the others become active. This doesn't hinder us or anything in the early game, but later on, as we get more and more buffs, it will actually make us have to choose which ones we want to use. And we can't just have as many as we want. We can just put these in our piggy bank and they will just stay active. Now that we have our buffs taken care of, let's go find a glowing mushroom biome and start fighting Krabulon. Well, we've got two blue jellyfish and there we go. We got the mana jelly. That's really important for later on because if you miss the mana jelly in pre-hard mode, you won't be able to craft the grand gelatin later on. And that's a really good item. So I was noticing we had this little arrow right here and it was pointing me towards something. And apparently it was pointing me towards the bound goblin. So it seems like our life form analyzer, I don't know what mod is doing it, but it basically is giving us an arrow to point us towards rare creatures. I didn't realize how good that is. That's so much better than just a normal life form analyzer. Cause a lot of times you're not looking up here, but this is amazing. We now have the goblin tinkerer so we can get our tinkerer workshop. We can get rocket boots. We can also buy a rogue level meter and that shows that our proficiency is a four out of 15. So our rogue proficiency is giving us 3% rogue damage, 1% rogue velocity and rogue critical increase is 1%. And you can actually equip this level meter and it will help you level up a little bit faster, but I prefer having my other accessories. And one thing we can do right here is actually combine our rocket boots and our Hermes boots and we can get some specter boots. Well, we found a mushroom biome. So all we need to do now is basically just set this arena up. We can throw a bunch of sticky bombs and kind of blow up the roof here. And hopefully we will have enough room to defeat Krabulon. Well, this is about as good of an arena as I was able to create in this particular mushroom biome. And it's hardly a big mushroom biome at all. <laughs> we barely have enough blocks to get the background to change. And it's a bit low underground, not the best place to fight this boss, but let's give it a try. Our best bet is to basically just tank him. I've got our sand cloak on and I want to use that right at the start of the fight or right even before the fight starts. And hopefully we can do a lot of damage with it. And then we'll just basically throw seafoam bombs and hope for the best. So let's get this fight going. And yeah, there we go. So we just need to do our best to stay alive. I think we're taking way too much damage. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we are. We need a much better and a much larger arena, but I'm gonna do my best here. Uh Oh yeah, that was no room. <laughs> oh man. We've definitely found a much better glowing mushroom biome that has a lot more potential for an arena. 
So now I just need to put down some platforms and then we'll be ready to go. Ooh, while crafting our arena, we just got a giant shell. And that's actually a pretty good accessory. It does six defense, 15% reduced movement speed. Taking a hit makes you move quickly. So that's pretty nice. I don't know if we've got anything to switch off for it currently, but maybe a little bit later we could. And let's give this a try. Let's see what we can do with the seafoam bomb. Seems pretty powerful, actually. And we gotta be super careful on this fight. Maybe we should use crystalline. There's a lot of enemies we need to be using this weapon on to kind of help with crowd control. So maybe this will help. We've already got them down a lot better than last time when we didn't have an arena practically. Okay, this is pretty good. And we've got our dash, which is quite helpful. Oh man, we took some hits there. Not good. Let's focus on killing the spores. We've got 38 seconds until we can heal up. Okay, we've got 24 seconds until we can heal. And unfortunately, we're taking too many hits here. Man, this is a tricky fight. It's on the same level as us. Luckily, it kind of falls down sometimes. And 14%. I think we should be good. When they rain down from above, it's pretty hard to dodge. Although I did just get it right there. Yes, we got him. I'm pretty stoked about killing Krabulon, not gonna lie. That was kind of a tricky fight. Each time those spores were coming down from above, I thought I was in a good position, but then they kind of slightly move left and right. So it does actually make it a little bit more tricky. Now that we're back at base, let's see what we got from the Krabulon treasure bag. And we got the two rogue items on our first try. I cannot believe that. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm actually extremely impressed. I was expecting to have to farm him up so many times. Plus we have the Mushroom Plasma Root, which is a permanent rage mode, 15% more damage buff. And that's Revengeance mode only. And we have the Angry Fungal Clump. And it basically summons a Fungal Clump that fights for us. It latches onto enemies and steals their life. And so that's the fungal clump right there. I usually don't like using it because I don't really want to have too many summon effects or anything. And here is the rogue weapon that we just got. It's extremely fast attack speed. It actually synergizes quite well with Victide because it procs the little seashell, the extra seashell damage quite often because it's hitting so quickly. And then we have the shroomerang. Another thing I want to do that I like to do pretty early on is just buy enough torches to craft an unlimited torch just so we don't have to worry about them anymore. 396 torches and you can get an unlimited torch and that's super handy. This looks like crazy good DPS. Although we got to be careful for this lightning. This actually looks like a pretty cool boomerang because you can shoot a bunch of them at the same time. It's not like the flamerang where you have to wait for it to come back before you can throw it again. But I think this one is my favorite just because of how quickly it attacks and it looks pretty dang cool. Some people have mentioned that there's shrines in the desert that can actually give us a pretty good item. So I'm definitely going to take a look and see if we can find that. Well, we found a chest, but yeah, we just need to explore for a little bit and hopefully we'll find something. 
we've got the boss. This is actually the one we ran away from previously. I think in this room, we'll be able to do pretty good. Yeah, we're doing so much damage to it. Yeah, we have definitely upgraded our weapons and armor enough. We are good to go in here, even if we find the mini boss. I just got a message saying that we have the acid rain event that just started. So we can definitely do that. I think I may do that next episode because that'll be kind of a larger event and we're kind of towards the end of this one. I know we can get a really good armor set from the Sulfurous Sea, so I definitely want to go head over there soon. Well, we're at the bottom of the desert biome and we actually have a shrine right here. So let's see what we got. And I can't believe it, we actually got the Luxor's Gift. So this says weapons fire unique projectiles based on the damage type they have. So let's put on the Luxor's Gift and see what it does to rogue weapons. Oh my goodness. What is this? This is so crazy. This is so cool. It like shoots out little scorpions. Man, that is really powerful, especially with this weapon because it's procking it so many times. I wonder how our DPS can be against like a boss with this. It looks like it's not doing much damage, but it's still pretty cool. This could be extremely powerful mixed with this weapon that has insane attack speed. I definitely need to try this out. I really need to get a DPS meter soon. That way we can know for sure. It looks like something you'd get from the Devourer of Gods or something. Obviously it's not doing, you know, very much damage, but it's still pretty cool. <laughs> Finding weapons like this that synergize and do cool effects just makes modded so fun. And I think this is a good place to end this episode. We've got so many good things. We defeated King Slime. We defeated the Eye of Cthulhu. We got a whole bunch more NPCs. We even defeated Krabulon and somehow got both of the weapons. So for sure at the beginning of next episode, we'll be able to go to the Sulfurous Sea so we can do the Acid Rain event. And then let's check our boss checklist um, and see what other things we can do. So we've got Blood Moon, Acid Rain. Then we've got Eater of Worlds, Hive Mind, and then the Queen Bee and Skeletron. So lots of good stuff coming up. If you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.